Today we're talking about confidence and overcoming the social anxieties that come with being a new photographer or a new videographer. This video was actually prompted from a previous viewer who saw my uh, make money quick as a photographer video. And I just want to read out his question real quick. This is from Steve Harbolt. Uh, we're going to go over five ways to kind of get confidence and get over social anxiety. So his question or his email says, hey, Andy, I stumbled upon your five tips to make money fast on your YouTube channel. I had a couple good takeaways from that video to motivate me to push forward. Thank you for that, Steve. That's awesome. Question, what advice would you have, if any, for a new photographer that has issues with social anxiety, has trouble talking with new people, comes off as unsure of themselves, finds the art of directing a subject during portraits extremely difficult, that sort of thing. Thanks, Steve. Um, so I'm just going to answer this real quick. And even though I like to think of myself as somebody who exudes like confidence and is like that alpha photographer and can kind of, you know, take control of a shoot, um, I will tell you that uh, sometimes I struggle with a little bit of self-confidence. I struggle with a little bit of imposter syndrome, even though I've been doing this for five years and have been making uh, pretty good money as a photographer. I still struggle with that. And I'm not going to lie. It's something that is still going to live in the back of your head, uh, no matter what shoot you go into, whether it's, you know, filming for a friend or photographing for a friend or shooting for a client that's about to pay you, you know, $5,000 or, um, like a, you know, a weekend in Sundance shooting celebrities like I did at one point, um, thinking that, yes, I'm confident and I've got this handled, but the days leading up to it, still dealing with that anxiety, that nervousness, the, am I going to mess this up? Man, they're going to see right through me and they're going to, everyone's going to know that I suck at this, right? There's always going to be an element to that, no matter uh, what phase of photography that you're in, you're always going to have that self-doubt. But I think that, um, you know, these tips that I'm about to give you, these five ways to just kind of convince yourself that you belong and that you got this handled is uh, really going to help you because um, I like to think that photographers, videographers who are humble and who, who, you know, don't walk around like they're the best thing on earth or God's gift to earth, uh, the ones that recognize that, hey, I can still make a mistake and I need to take this serious are the ones that thrive. So I'm not going to tell you that that's going to go away forever because that's a lie. All right. So uh, the tip, the first tip that I have here for overcoming like the social anxiety like um, Steve had just mentioned is uh, start small. Okay. So starting small, um, you want to go into like these low pressure situations or these low pressure shoots in the very beginning. Um, you don't want to go and like capture like these whale clients or these whale type shoots that are going to pay you a lot of money and put a lot of pressure on you in the beginning. Um, so what I did when I was first starting was, you know, I reached out to friends. I reached out to, um, family members. I reached out to friends who might've owned businesses and um, in the beginning, I offered some free work with the expectation of, hey, I want to do a, a portrait shoot with you. I don't really know what I'm doing with my camera. This may turn out really well or it might suck. Um, I might take 500 photos and only give you five or I might take 500 photos and I might not give you any because uh, we don't know if it's going to be good or not. And so when you start small and you make it low pressure like that, and you go with someone who is familiar uh, with you and, and they understand that you're learning, then there's more room for forgiveness. There's more room for uh, making mistakes. There's, there's more room for growth in that moment. And uh, one thing that I would always ask for when I was first starting, when I would go shoot with friends, family members, or friends who owned businesses, I, is, you know, I always kind of ask them like, hey, what do you think I could improve on? Right? Like, is it giving you direction? Is it posing you better? Is it outlining the expectations of what, I, of what I'm going to give you? And uh, somebody always has something constructive to give back to you. Um, most of the time, some people might be nice and they might say, no, that was perfect. You're great. You're awesome. But really try to get that feedback out of them so that you can actually grow. So start small. Uh, shoot, shoot with people that you're comfortable with. That's tip number one. Um, again, friends, family, 
could even be your dog. Um, get into those low pressure uh, settings that, again, give you the chance to mess up. You can figure things out. You can grow. And each time you push yourself even just a little, it gets easier. Photography, videography, content marketing, filming, editing, anything that you do with a camera, it is like building a muscle. Um, it is something that you have to practice. Um, it's it's like the same thing as sports, right? Like you have to put in the practice to ultimately get better. You have to definitely practice in many different scenarios, whether that's like indoor uh, shooting, outdoor shooting, lighting, uh, or photography with lighting, photography with no lighting. Um, because when you're in those situations where you're working for a client and you just show up and you don't know what the environment is, you have to be so dialed that your hands just automatically know, uh, Hey, I need to drop down my aperture. I need to shut the, or I need to put down my shutter speed. I got to go to this ISO. I got to shoot at this frame rate for this project. Um, I need this lens, this camera. Um, so start small. That's basically, you know, getting practice and getting familiar. So that's tip number one. Um, tip number two. I wrote here, uh, have a cheat sheet. So um, uh, here, I'll just read what I wrote out. So I wrote, if you're like me, and sometimes you you black out under pressure because that happens sometimes, um, having a mental or even like a physical cheat sheet uh, will save you. So think of a few simple uh, phrases that you can use during your shoot. Um, some examples that I wrote down is, hey, let's try something natural or st stand however feels comfortable to you. Um, and then I'll guide you from there. You could even just watch some other YouTube videos on, on how to, you know, pose people properly, um, how to make people comfortable, uh, shooting women versus men is very different. A female versus a male. Like if you're paying a compliment, uh, you even want to be careful if you like, when you take a photo of somebody with portrait photography and you don't like the photo, you got to even like save those facial expressions and like, put them deep in here, meaning like don't show the reaction on your face because I've been in those situations where I take a photo and I don't like it and I go Ugh, like that. I'm like, oh, damn, I'm like oh, I don't like that. And sometimes like the person that you're photographing will internalize that and they'll take that and they'll think like, am I ugly? Do I have something on my face? Like, do I have something in my teeth? Um, so they always think it's a, it's about them. Like, even though I'm not happy with the photo, produce a, a little cheat sheet or, or just take some notes of uh, phrases. Um, I always kind of scour, uh, days before I have a shoot, depending on what it is, I'll go on to YouTube. YouTube is like the best library, best knowledge, best education for photography. I'll watch a, a few different channels and just kind of see how they, uh, guide their models or, uh, you know, what they're saying, what they're doing, how they're interacting. Um, but everybody is different. So that's number two. That's somewhat of a good tip. It, you know, that's that's just kind of what helps me. Uh, number three, um, letting the moments happen. So, uh, you know, posing can feel intimidating. And I will say that for as anxious and as nervous as you are, uh, the person who's being photographed is probably five times or ten times uh, way more nervous than you are. Okay? Like, there's pressure when you're faced with the lens and it's just being pointed at you and you're the sole focus. So if you're feeling anxious and you're feeling nervous, just remember the other person on the other side, no matter how uh, confident they might be or how many times they've done it, uh, there always is a level of nervousness and there's always a level of like self-doubt on their side. Sometimes what you can do, you know, just to, to let those little moments happen is um, just, just ask them if they have like a preferred side of their face that they like to be shot. Um, ask them if, you know, hey, is there a pose that you like to do? Or, hey, when someone's taking a photo of you, like, what do you naturally do? Do you put your hands in your pocket? Do you do like a shoulder up? Do you tilt your head? Um, you can always have them do like what's natural to them or what they might want to do in that moment and then kind of guide them from there and then just kind of take a, a little bit of control as you're like doing that portrait photography with them. Let the little moments happen. If they, you know, if you're if you're at a shoot and they want to wear a cowboy hat and they want to like look out into the distance, um, it's your job to just kind of be moving with the camera as much as you can just to try to get different angles, get low, get high, uh, get straight on, turn their shoulders, turn their head. Um, 
it's kind of up to you to, to mold them a little bit, but you can always ask them what, what feels natural to them in the moment, what kind of shots do they want, and then you can just direct them from there. Um, number four, I wrote trick your brain. So this is tip number four, like dealing with uh, your social anxiety and you're not so confident uh, self-talk. Um, you have to basically trick, trick your brain. Like you have to uh, ultimately just believe that you are a really, really good photographer, a really, really good videographer, a great director. And so what I wrote down here is, you know, I know it sounds weird, but, you know, try to visualize how the shoot is going to go before it happens. Uh, picture yourself talking confidently to your subject, um, getting great, amo- amazing photos, uh, photos uh, feeling in control, right? And, you know, what's funny about it is it's just like with everything. Um, you're going to have self-doubt. You're going to feel like uh, you're not up for the task. You're going to feel like you're going to fail miserably, but you have to just walk in there just knowing that you're going to do a good job and that ultimately you're going to deliver a awesome product. Here's a, here's a story that literally just happened this last week. So I have a friend who wanted to do um, like cheesy Christmas family photos with like Christmas sweaters and all these weird poses and they kind of wanted it like JC Penny style from like the nineties. And that's something that I've never shot before. And they wanted to do it at their house. So the way that I prepped for that was, uh, going and looking at some samples that I asked for them to provide. Um, that's also another tip in this is, uh, never walk into a photo shoot blind, especially like if somebody is asking you to come and, uh, take photos of them or they want you to do work for them, ask for references, ask for uh, what kind of photos or what kind of video they want. Um, That way you can A, see if you're up to par for it, if it's something that you can produce, and then B, if it's um, something that you can research. So in this case, I was researching all these photos, um, looking at the different poses, screenshotting, and then having those as references in my phone so that when I got to their house, I already had maybe five or six different poses in mind for them, um, the the husband and the wife, and then other poses planned out for the husband, wife, the teenage son, and the baby, right? And ultimately, it all came together. I'm currently working on those now, and I'm actually really, really happy with the way that they turned out. But just know that, like I mentioned before, any situation that you walk into it's perfectly normal to be nervous. It's perfectly normal to think that you're not going to do a good job. And uh, I think that's what really makes a, a good photographer is knowing that you can do a good job, but knowing that there's still room for error and just always being ready and having enough practice, like in tip number one, having enough practice to just be good in any situation. I know that when I go out to shoot like major league soccer matches, I know that I'm ready to go. I, I know that I'm ready for any lighting scenario, whether it's midday, um, night, whether the stadium is like half lit and not lit um, due to shadows. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just go time. You got to just know that uh, it, it's never going to end. You're, you're never going to feel 100% confident that you're going to do a good job. But it's in those moments that, you know, everything that you prepare for, all the practice, all the work that you've put in. When you're put in that situation, uh, you're going to come out with good work. Trick your brain into thinking that you are the best. Uh, but remember, you can trick yourself into thinking that you're the best, but without the practice, you're probably going to mess up. So practice, 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 practice. Always get out there and practice. Um, literally, guys, like think about it. This weekend, you probably got nothing planned. Hit up a friend. Go shoot some portraits. Hit up a friend uh, who maybe wants... I don't know, uh, they, they play in a sports league where they have kids, go shoot that game. Um, if, if you have a friend with a cool car or a motorcycle, hit them up, go, go do some portrait shots like that with, you know, the vehicles. Um, there's always room for practice and improvement and it's just putting in the hours and putting in the work and just making those mistakes. That's going to make you better. Right. Um, tip number five, um, keep it simple with posing. So, uh, you know, Posing, I found out that, you know, like less is more. Uh, so I've, I've been in a couple situations where, um, 
you know, there's two different types of people. There's people who have been photographed quite a lot and their, their go-tos are like, they'll throw their hands up and like do this up against a wall and they're like looking at you and they're doing all these extravagant things. But I found out that like for my style of shooting, I don't really like that. Um, so my, my approach is, is less is more with posing. Um, I, when I take a photograph, like I want to really deliver a, like a feeling more so over like, you know, there, there's different types of photograph, uh, photographers. There's people who I think take images of people doing poses to maybe like accentuate like the body and like show off the body. But for me, it's like, I don't really care more so about the body. For me, it's like, I want to, I want to get into your soul. Like, I want you to hit this amazing look where you're like looking into the lens, you're posing just right. Maybe there's like a sunset behind you. There's something in the background that just like hits the light, the lighting correct. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a photo that I took of a friend a while ago. That's one of my most favorite photos. And, um, people could have made the argument like, Hey, there's plenty of material there where you can like pose them and have them do all these, you know, weird poses. But for me, it's like, I, I kind of want to show you like direct, like, like it's like they're telling you something. I, I can't really describe it. I just wrote here. Um, you can start with super like minor adjustments when you ask them, Hey, is there a pose that you like to do? Or, is there something that you have in mind? You can go in there and you can, you know, kind of move a hand around or you can, you know, it's really hard to describe. I should probably make an actual video about this, but you can make those micro adjustments. You can move hair, you can, you know, move a beanie down. You can, um, I don't know, like you, you, you can just move something in their framework, like their shoulders or have their, their head move up a little bit. And it's going to change the shot. And when you have what you want, that's when you snap it, right? So um, the key is to keep it natural. More importantly, encourage them, okay? So uh, always encourage the people that you're, that you're photographing. Even if you do have a little bit of social anxiety, you kind of want to just build them up and let them know that they're doing a good job. Uh, let them know like, hey, oh my gosh, that's an amazing shot. Hey, you're doing really great. Hold it there. Boom, boom, boom. All right, cool. Hey, this looks so good. Um, let's try a different pose. Let me have you turn around, look back at the camera. Awesome. Oh, you're, you're doing so great. You're super photogenic, right? Like you always want to just kind of lift them up. Even in the instances where you may not be happy with that photo, you still want to build them up. Um, now, uh, here's a bonus tip, uh, before you click off and before we end, uh, this video, um, you know, one of the best things that you can do is just take a few minutes before the actual photography session and just chat uh, with the person that you're about to shoot. Um, break the ice a little bit. Ask them about their day. Um, you could share like, you know, something funny that happened to you that day. Uh, you can, you know, give them a little bit of insight as to like, hey, I, I, I chose this spot because of X, Y, Z reasons. Or, hey, you know what? I thought of you for this photo shoot because I thought it would just be so cool. Like you just have the look that I'm looking for. Um, or just talk about like what you're excited for in general. Um, breaking the ice with someone that you're about to photograph is really the key. Um, you don't want to show up and just be like this like stiff, nervous person that hasn't said a word to anybody. Really just try to break them down um, in a good way. Uh, try to connect with them. Um, pay them a little compliment. You know what I mean? Uh, there's so much that you can do to, to just break the ice. I do this, uh, I wouldn't say daily, but like almost weekly, I'll go and film people for my day job. And a lot of them haven't been on camera. And when I walk into their residence, I'm just kind of pointing out things that I like or, Hey, wow, this is a beautiful home. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love your furniture. Oh, this is my, wow. Your sense of decorating is awesome. Right. Or, Hey, I, I, I really love that jacket that you have on. That's a great choice. Or, hey, your car in the driveway, it's super cool. Like, it's a Toyota RAV4. Dude, my uncle drives one of those. Like, no, my uncle doesn't, you know. Um, there's always just things that you can do to just kind of break the ice, um, have a little fun with them, 
And then when it's go time, that's kind of when you get serious and you start really planting the vision. And that's when you take control, right? So, you know, the confidence thing is is actually something that you can absolutely work through. Um, it, it's not something, uh, like, I'll just tell you this. Um, the more that you put into your head or like the more that you reaffirm that, I'm anxious. I'm nervous. I'm not good at this. Uh, no one likes me. Uh, I'm awkward. I'm weird. Like this is, you know, this is never going to work. The more that you feed that stuff into your brain, like the more it comes true. Right. So you, you, you have to be willing to just flip off that switch and you have to just tell yourself, just remind yourself every single day that you're confident. Yes, I'm awesome. I'm a great photographer. I'm really good at what I do and people freaking love me. And the more that you do that and the more that you start to kind of break out of your shell and just talk to these people and just know that it's literally just another human on the other side of this camera, uh, the more that things are going to go well for you, the more that they're going to refer you to their, their friends, their, their friends who own businesses, their family members, whatever it might be, the quicker that you get to just really truly believing in yourself and knowing that it just takes a little bit of time and practice and, and you got to just put yourself out there, the faster you're going to arrive to being less of like that social anxious wreck that you believe that you are, but you actually aren't. Uh, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, um, watch this video right here. This is how to make money as a photographer right from the get-go. Um, it's getting a lot of engagement, a lot of views, so people... Uh, seem to love that video. It's really, really working for them. And if you guys have any YouTube ambitions and you guys are looking to start a YouTube channel, check out this video right here. Um, it's how my life changed with only 500 subscribers. I uh, would really appreciate it if you guys looked at those and remember to subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next video. I'm Andy Munoz, Andy X Munoz on social media. Bye.